Coming up now on Animal Outtakes, good news for sea turtles on the Florida Sun Coast. We'll show you what is being done to achieve record hatches this year. We'll get up close and personal with a huge anaconda. You won't believe what the big squeeze is all about. And our Kid and Critter segment looks at the special bond between dogs and their owners. That and more right now on Animal Outtakes. Welcome to Animal Outtakes. I'm Marsha Panucci. We have a great show for you today. Each week, we take you behind the scenes of the animal kingdom to share stories that educate, inspire, and sometimes just make us laugh out loud. And Zeus is here to help me get through the show. And hopefully you'll agree, he's a pretty amazing guy. And he's a real German, German Shepherd. Sprechen Sie Deutsch, Zeus? Well, okay, enough with the German. We begin our show today with a story of survival that shows what can be accomplished when science, technology, and love for animals are combined. In today's edition of Preserve and Protect, the comeback story of the Florida sea turtle. You know, Zeus, they had a pretty rough time. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Ocean stewardship is an important part of our future, and we're lucky to have a leading research and education facility right here in Sarasota Bay. Moat Marine is dedicated to learning more about the oceans and the plant and animal life that live there. Moat Marine recently began its 34th year of monitoring sea turtle nesting. So we stopped by to see how it was going. We're in the middle of nesting season here in Florida, and what type of turtles are we looking at? Uh, so on our coastline here, the main species that we get nesting is the loggerhead sea turtle. Uh, occasionally we also get the green sea turtle and the Kemp's Ridley as well on this coastline, but primarily loggerheads. And this nesting season has been very active. We have had a record year for hatchlings as well. Uh, this year we had over 3,000 come through the hospital, more than any other season um, before, and uh, it's kept us very busy. It keeps them busy on many fronts since the hatchlings come into the hospital for a variety of reasons. The main things that we see hatchlings come in for are disorientations, meaning they got distracted by a bright light on the beach and went the wrong way, ended up um, away from the water. Or they come in for injuries from predators such as fire ants, crabs, birds, um, being just weak or lethargic. And then the main reason we see hatchlings come in is from depredations which is when uh, like a raccoon or an armadillo actually digs into the nest and injures eggs and hatchlings before they've come out of the egg. But humans can be part of the problem too. And that's another reason why we have this hatchling hospital in place, uh, not only to care for the individuals, but to kind of educate the public on what they can do to help sea turtle conservation. Female sea turtles lay anywhere from 80 to 120 eggs at a time, and it takes around 60 days for them to incubate. Hatchlings emerge as a group, orienting themselves to the brightest horizon, hopefully dashing toward the water. There are several things we as humans can do to help preserve the turtles and their nests. Sea turtles have been around for quite a long time, uh, and unfortunately the only reason they're considered endangered now is due to the human element, as you said. We know that every species in the ocean is an important part of its ecosystem, and sea turtles are no different. They help keep the oceans healthy, so every turtle matters. Every single hatchling that comes into our hospital is getting a second chance, and we do our very best to get as many as we can back out into the wild. I have to tell you, that is the most rewarding part of this job. Uh, it's very hard to see all of these hatchlings come in and they're injured, they're weak, you know, something happened to them. But when you go out and you let them go on that beach after you've been able to take care of them and you see them swim away, it's, I can't describe it. It's just, it's a really rewarding feeling and it's my favorite part of it. Sea turtles are ancient creatures and the seven species found today are believed to have been here since the time of the dinosaurs. 
They're found in all warm and temperate waters throughout the world. And some can migrate as far as 1,400 miles between their feeding grounds and their nesting beaches. Sea turtles are definitely a species to preserve and protect. Speaking of turtles, our good friends at Moat Marine Research in Sarasota had a lot to celebrate this month. Meet Tucker, a young adult loggerhead who was released into the Gulf of Mexico. Tucker was found stranded back in May. He had been exposed to red tide and was suffering from a condition called lethargic loggerhead syndrome, which can leave sea turtles listless and vulnerable to predators. Fortunately for Tucker, he was rescued and brought to Moat Marine Turtle Rehab Hospital where he was nursed back to health. And now, Tucker is back home in the beautiful Gulf of Mexico. Interesting fact, loggerheads can live up to 50 years or more. Each week in our Kids and Critters segment, we share stories about what we've learned from animals. It could be a lesson of love, it could be of hard work and responsibility, or it could just be a simple fact of life we never really knew. Here's Lauren with this week's edition of Kids and Critters. When I first took my tour, I saw him. He's just laying down in the kennel and he started wagging his tail. I went in there and it's just love at first sight. I'm so lucky to be with Senshi now because he was scheduled to be euthanized at a high kill shelter. He was minutes away from, you know, dying. He was minutes away from being killed and Dante's den got a call about funny looking Sharpe mix, and they came and picked him up and saved his life. Where are you going? From what I've heard and what uh, pictures I've seen, he was very emaciated when he first came here. Definitely didn't look as handsome as he is today. Um, he was very withdrawn when he first came here. He never really acknowledged anybody, never looked up at anybody, just kind of laid there. Every day now that I work here, I have to have my senshi time. I go in there for his kennel from 10 to 15 minutes during my breaks or whatever, and I'll just sit with him and we'll go out and play fetch or whatever. <laughs> He's not interested. Senshi just makes me smile every day. He, you know, always is happy no matter what. He always makes me laugh and just his little puppy face and the way he plays with all of his friends, it gives me something to look forward to every day, even when I'm not feeling well or I'm upset. He always kind of is there to remind me that, you know, you can find the happiness in every day. It's just a lot for a dog to know that they're safe and that he's not gonna, you know, be euthanized. He's not gonna get hurt again. He's not gonna be starved and um, definitely human interaction and just me going in there and spending time with him, I know that that helps him trust. Because I know a lot of these dogs, they're not stupid. They know that when they're going, the when they're facing death, definitely. They get scared and they know that they've gotten a second chance. Come here, come back. Shelter dogs are not broken and they're not messed up dogs. They're perfectly, they're all amazing. And even if some are scared and are growling at you and barking at you, there's a really a senshi <laughs> buried deep in there. <laughs> Don't go away, we've got much more to come. Meet my new best friend, Miss Anna Conda. Just kidding, but I did get wrapped up in this story, if you know what I mean. And later in the show, from big snakes to big dogs, these lovable Danes are featured in our Dog of the Week segment. You'll learn what makes them, well, so really great. People have asked me what it'll cost to restore all the corals back the way they remember. 
But I have to ask them, what will it cost if we don't do anything? For thousands of years, we've been humans' best friend. You've been through a lot, and we've been right there with you. A dog is part of the family, a confidant, and a friend who always knows how to get into your heart. So what happens to our beloved companions when we can no longer care for them? This is why we've created Dante's Den, an innovative, state-of-the-art facility that will provide care for up to 100 dogs. Dante's Den is a community for joyful dogs. Millions of Americans face uncertainty when planning for the future of beloved pets who may well outlive them. Dante's Den is a charitable organization, so in whatever capacity you can, please lend your support so that we may continue this most wonderful work. Dante and I would like to thank you for watching and for also opening up your hearts to our wonderful community of joyful dogs. Learn about the many ways you could become involved by visiting dantesden.org. Welcome back. Now it's time to take a bit of an adventure, an animal adventure. This is the point in the show where we share stories of exotic animals from lions and tigers and bears to, well, this week, a giant snake, the giant anaconda to be exact. I tried really hard to look like I wasn't scared. So you tell me if you think I was convincing. Andrew, we're here in beautiful Date City, Florida, at your marvelous sanctuary. Thank you. How did you get this started? Uh, well, really, I got started probably about 10 years ago with my wife. Um, I met her through her brother. We were friends, and then uh, we both had a passion for animals, and that passion developed into hanging out all the time and working with animals, and then we ended up getting married and building this ourselves. But when you talk animals, we're not talking dogs and cats. No, we, uh, we focus mostly on exotic animals. We're a, we're a company that works with educating people on animals, but we're also a sanctuary. So we take in unwanted pets or, or people that have had exotic animals that shouldn't have them. At any point in time, Wild Transport Sanctuary has between 50 and 100 animals. But today, I'm interested in one of the most misunderstood animals, or reptiles to be exact. And what about snakes? We do love our snakes. We do. Um, we, that's one of the things that we, we do work with a lot is snakes, and we help educate people on snakes. Because snakes really do have a bad reputation. Um, and it seems like the bigger they get, the scarier they are. So we like to inform people that not every snake is a bad snake. Most actually all snakes are, are good snakes. They're here for a purpose. So um, we actually have a really cool snake that we're going to show you here in a second. Really? That, uh, that really has a scary reputation. <laughs> and uh, she's actually not that bad. But she's huge. She oh is. She's pretty big. Oh, my goodness. She is huge. Oh, my heavens. Look at that. Oh, so, yes. Oh, oh, and she's heavy. She is oh, heavy. Oh, she's heavy. Hey, we got it. There we go. Oh, look. Oh, my goodness. So uh, this is... Uh, what do you do? Do you pet them? <laughs> um, usually you just support them and make them feel comfortable. Yes, well, she's coming around the bend she's here. She's going to check you out. Annie, Andrew's green anaconda, is a beautiful example of the largest species of snake in the world. They are found in South America and can be more than 20 feet long and over 500 pounds. And Annie has a knack of, well, uh, shall we say, connecting people. Now, I'm going to drop her. She's coming right off of my knees yep. here. She's going to... So, uh, and, yeah. she, <laughs> and she's moving the whole she chair. She really brings people close together. Yes, you know? she does. <laughs> yes, she does. Uh, she'd be great on a first date. That's right. <laughs> she's a real icebreaker. Yes. Um, Although not a great life partner, anacondas live about 10 years but may exceed 30 years. Females are typically larger than males and have been known to eat their smaller mating partners in order to last through the seven-month fast associated with their pregnancy. However, this is not the case with Annie. She, um, she feeds mostly on rabbits. We get frozen thawed rabbits. Um, uh -huh. 
So they're pre-killed and they come in frozen and she'll eat that. That's her main diet is those. And then she does vary from time to time to um, pigs and things like that as well. Pigs? Yep. So she can eat she a whole pig? She can take about a 20 pound pig. But anacondas have a slow metabolism. So if Annie eats a pig, she may not eat again for three to four weeks. Now, if you think an anaconda may make a great pet, think again. These are illegal to own in Florida, correct? That's correct. They are illegal to have as a pet. Because they are so large, green anacondas have few natural predators. Their biggest threat are humans because of misguided fears or loss of habitat. Well, Andrew, we thank you. And Annie, we thank you too. This is little Mo here, and Mo is a five-year-old miniature schnauzer. He's very adaptable, uh, playful, and uh, just kind of the center of attention in our house. His full name is Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, so we, because he's German, he's a German breed, and uh, so we call him Mo, Mo for short. Uh, Mo's day starts uh, with his morning walk. He gets out around seven o'clock, and we take a walk on the golf course. He likes to play a little ball ball then in the morning. And then in the e afternoon, he takes another walk. Uh, might play ball a little bit in the house and eats uh, his dinner around three o'clock in the afternoon. Any meal is a favorite meal for Mo. He, he inhales anything that you, you, you put in front of him. He does eat carrots. Uh, for, they're good for his teeth um, and, uh, and they're good for his uh, head and his hearing. And, um, in his eyes, and he, uh, he, does, he does like that. You know, I would have to say he's mostly my wife's dog, uh, because she's here more with him than I am. I would say that his, the high point of his day is when he takes his walkie with me. He, he sleeps at the, at the bottom of the bed most nights, but not every night. He can walk on his hind legs for about three feet, without too much trouble at all. He does vertical jumps up in the air. Uh, very springy and ac acrobatic in that way. He's, uh, he's a great guy. I would recommend uh, miniature schnauzers to any, anyone. First, they're, they're beautiful animals. Their temperament is both uh, uh, affectionate uh, and, and protective, uh, but they're very ad adaptable. They're great around kids. They're amusing, they're very funny. They have a, this one has a, has a terrier temperament. Um, so I guess I'd have to say mostly their, 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 their temperament, they're fun to be with and, uh, and they're great companions. We're a family that has always had animals around us. We've dogs, cats, ferrets, horses. They bring us uh, companionship, uh, they make us laugh. Uh, and most of all, uh, they, they bring love into our house, and I, I, can't, I can't imagine not, not having, having one around. Up next, the dog. Well, make that dogs plural of the week. Ever wanted to own a Great Dane, but thought their size made them too hard to care for? Well, when you meet these two beautiful Danes, you'll be surprised to learn how laid back they are and how adaptable they are as well. Don't go away. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. It's time for our guide dog puppy to strut his stuff. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. A Southeastern guide dog trainer joins us to work with our puppy and give helpful hints to the future superhero. We'll learn how to turn sea salt crystals into a relaxing and cleansing hand scrub. Dr. Jenny has help for thyroid problems, plus Suncoast Food and Wine Fest and Spice and Tea Exchange in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. ABC7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community. With a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC7 News at 7, weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. 
Just that simple act is transforming someone else's life. It's one of the best feelings in the world. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. Every child follows a path in life. For many, that path will lead them to a door, a door that gives them a place to grow, to learn, to belong, a place to forge their future. Because while many doors open, these doors transform. They did for us. Support your local boys and girls clubs. Great futures start here. Now it's time to share the canine spotlight, a segment we call the dog of the week. You know, Zeus is my top dog, but I gotta tell you, when I met Eliza and Abba, well, I fell in love. Those two Danes are a couple of great dames. See if you agree. Nikki, we're here with this lover, Eliza, who is a Brindle Great Dane. When did this breed originate? Well, their ancestors go back to ancient times, uh, and they were used in the Middle Ages as wild boar hunters, so they're giant game hunters. Um, and they uh, were developed, actually, in Germany, in different portions of Germany, developed the different colors. We have six different approved colors. Now, how much does this little girl weigh? <laughs> she weighs about 145. Oh, and she is solid, absolutely solid. Does she eat a lot? Actually, no. She eats about, she eats two meals a day. It's always good to feed them twice a day. But twice a day, she eats about three and a half cups twice a day of dry food. And the exercise is moderate. Moderate exercise. They're uh, moderate emotional needs. They, uh, they're not aloof, but they're not cloying and needy. Well, the boys are probably needier. <laughs> the boys are always needier. Aren't they always? Yes, they yeah. are. <laughs> um, what, what is the average lifespan of these The giant great breeds dates? average um, about seven years. Uh, there are three uh, conditions that um, are the more common things that they might die of. A uh, heart issue, uh, bloat, uh, which is a, when the stomach expands and twists mm -hmm. and it's very critical, or cancer. Um, probably the most common cancer is bone cancer. And what would you say, she makes great kisses, what is her <laughs> best feature other than the kissing? Well, her temperament is wonderful. I love her temperament. They're very easy to live with. They don't, it doesn't take an extra lot of hard work to have them. And nobody breaks in my house. We'll be right back. Designers do it with style. Tell me what's going on here. Because Why you don't like my hair? The Mark and Mandy Show. In-depth design ideas. What is up with the tuck tape here? Let's cover it up. Amazing beauty and fashion tips. So Halle Berry has amazing skin. She Her secret it. is coffee ground. No. Delicious recipes. Today I'm going to show you a special dish that is sure to please that special someone in your life. Watch the Mark and Mandy Show right here on your favorite channel. <laughs> Speed, power, and excitement come to ABC7 Sunday, November 20th with live coverage of the Inglewood Beach Water Fest. See the World Championship for the Offshore Power Boat Association with boats running at speeds up to 180 miles per hour. Join Bob Harrigan for complete coverage from noon to 3 on Sunday, November 20th or watch on the ABC7 channel on Amazon Fire TV. Go to mysuncoast.com for more info. Brought to you by Mr. Sparky. Presented by ABC7 and WENG Radio. Have you ever wondered what it's like to save a life? Find out by donating platelets at Suncoast Blood Bank. I'm Haley Wilgus, ABC7. Platelets aid in the clotting process and are vital in the treatment of cancer and surgical patients, trauma victims, and critically ill newborns. It's tough to keep enough on the shelves because they only last five days. To donate, call this number or visit scbb.org and you can help save a life. ABC7 congratulates Suncoast Blood Bank on 65 years of serving our community. At ABC7, it's all about being here for you. 
ABC 7 News at 7 with award-winning investigative journalist Alan Cohn. In-depth reporting and debate on important issues and stories in our community with a featured topic of the day and a live roundtable discussion with community leaders and newsmakers. Plus a quick recap of the day's top stories and weather. ABC 7 News at 7 weeknights. Now more than ever, we're here for you, Suncoast. How long have we been married, then? For 76 years. He was kind and generous to me before we married, and he was kind and generous to me all these years. We decided on Meals on Wheels because I was getting to the point where I couldn't do all the things that I had been able to do. We're the Spans. America, let's do lunch. Drop off a hot meal and say hello. Volunteer by donating your lunch break at americaletsdolunch.org. With diabetes, is an elevation of blood sugar. So the pancreas is an organ of digestion that has little sort of islands, we call them actually islets, inside of it that have cells producing insulin. The insulin makes sure that all that glucose we eat, all that sugar we eat or process, gets put into our tissues so we can flex, we can move, we can be active because we feed on that sugar and particularly our brain. So when you have diabetes, what happens is you have a lack of insulin and you can end up having a lot of blood sugar in your blood, but it's not going to the tissues. So you have a patient with high blood sugar, or we call it glucose, that is actually unable to really move as well, is getting weak and they can get prone to infection, they can get prone to a lot of secondary diseases. So what you need to know is that regularly you need to check your pet for blood sugar once a year, get a full blood work just like you and I, and also be aware that there are certain breeds that are more prone to it. Cats can often have diabetes, certain breeds of dogs can have it, so ask your vet, is my dog a breed prone to diabetes? If your dog starts drinking a lot or peeing a lot, that's a very, very big sign that maybe diabetes is on the list. Could also be urinary tract infection, could be another endocrine problem, but that's definitely one of the big ones when you have a lot of drinking and a lot of peeing, um, possibly urinary tract infection, skin infection, Ask your vet. You can watch full episodes of Animal Outtakes by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Just visit youtube.com slash animal outtakes. Well, that just about wraps it up for this week, and we hope that you've learned something about animals, and we thank you for joining us. Be safe, be kind, and don't forget our animal friends. I'm Marsha Panucci with Zeus, and we will see you next week. There we go. Well, there's the answer to that question. I think she was. Oh, I hope she got that. You know, that brings up a very, very good, very good issue on my. <laughs> I didn't expect her there. <laughs> <laughs>
ABC7 is proud to present Line Dance Central. Now you can learn popular country and not-so-country line dances from the comfort of your own home. Just visit mysuncoast.com, click on entertainment, and you'll be kicking up your boots or flip-flops in no time. Brought to you by the White Buffalo Saloon and Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. The all-new mysuncoast.com. Just another way we're here for you. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights.